it requires much from its athletes. A gentle quickness to control the raging power, strength to fight the forces of speed, eyesight to reveal the dangers that lie hundreds of yards ahead, yet only seconds away. Concentration that, if broken, results in disaster. And the courage to accept the rough and dangerous road of racing with an almost casual air. It's a long and painful road from novice to master. Only the few with the greatest desire and determination survive. Fewer still will ever wear the crown of a champion. Today, it's a meeting of the best. Champions all in equally prepared cars. The mechanical factors are eliminated, and only the driver remains. It's the International Race of Champions. In today's field, representing stock cars, the seven-time and defending Winston Cup champion, Dale Earnhardt. Stock car racing's bright new star, Jeff Gordon. From road racing, the great long-distance master, Hurley Haywood. The 1990 Trans Am and three-time IMSA champion road racer, Tom Kendall. 14-time World of Outlaws champion, the greatest sprint car driver ever, Steve Kinzer. Four-time ASA champion and the defending IROC champion, Mark Martin. Steve Millen is not racing today as he is still recovering from his IMSA accident at Road Atlanta. Two-time IMSA and twice Trans Am champion, road racer Scott Pruitt. The champion of IROC 16, representing NASCAR stock cars, Ricky Rudd. USAC champion in dirt cars, midgets, and sprints, and stock champion, Ken Schrader. Two-time IROC and defending two-time IndyCar champion, Al Unser Jr. The 1989 Winston Cup champion and champion of IROC 15, Rusty Wallace. Twelve of the finest are now ready to pit their skills against one another in the International Race of Champions. IROC 19, the fourth and final round from Michigan International Speedway. This is Judgment Day in the International Race of Champions. At the end of the run, we'll find out who will take home that brand new Dodge Avenger. Who will win the $225,000, but most important, we'll find out who will be the champion of IROC 19. Now, currently, there are five drivers with a shot at that championship. Dale Earnhardt leads Mark Martin by a mere 10 points, but Scott Pruitt, Kenny Schrader, and Jeff Gordon are all very definitely in the fight here today. Now, the final round, they line up in inverse order of the points, and that means that Dale Earnhardt will line up all the way in the back. So the focus in the early laps will be on Martin and Earnhardt. Let's go down and take a look at those guys with Jack Aroot. Well, Dale Earnhardt, you've got a long way to go, dead last, and yet you're leading in the points. What's the strategy? Well, the strategy is to follow Pruitt or Martin, whoever, which one is the fastest, and I'm going to draft right up through the crowd with them, hopefully, but I, don't, I know it's going to be a race. These guys are awful competitive here, and the cars are running all uh, consistently the, the same, and the tires are great, so this new service has made it to car stick well, so it's going to be competitive. Mark Martin, in order for you to win the championship, you've got to shake your nemesis, Earnhardt. What are you going to do? Well, we just have to race as hard as we can go, you know. Uh, last year, it wasn't, you know, just everything worked out well for us. We went to the front and led a lot of laps and won the thing by 10 points. This year, we're 10 points behind, so things have to go at least as well as they did last year for us or maybe even better. We just have to race for it. Benny Parsons, it's a long way from here to the front. Jack and folks, how many times have we seen this? Dale Earnhardt in 11th, 12th, 14th spot having to get to the front to win the money and seldom does Earnhardt disappoint. Folks, I'd almost guarantee you, if his horse is good today, we'll see Earnhardt at least four wide, one or two times on the straightaways here at Michigan, trying his best to get to the front. When he gets to the corner, he's gonna have a little bit of a problem because over the winter, they completely repaved this racetrack. It's very fast, it's very smooth, and although there's been a 400-mile stock car race here, the groove is kinda narrow. It's really two car lengths wide, so 
Sam, we can only figure that Earnhardt will be three abreast in the corners. Well, exactly, and I think what's going to be particularly tough for Dale and the other championship contenders is working out exactly how the points stand as the race nears its conclusion. That's because the bonus points that are awarded for leading laps during the race can only be calculated during the race itself. And remember, under IROC rules, you get no help from the pits. There's no radio communication, no pit board held out. The driver has to calculate it all on his own while he's driving and then figure out what to do about it. Now you remember this crash in round number one at Daytona when Dale Earnhardt and Al Unser Jr. tangled? Well, Jr. wasn't injured in that accident, but it was the last time that we saw him in the IROC because he sat out both Darlington and Talladega due to other injuries. Well, he is back now. And Jack Aroot, what is his role in today's IROC? Well, up front on the point, what are you going to do today, Al Jr.? Well, we're just going to go out and uh, have fun in the Dodge Avenger and see what happens. You know, we're, uh, we're last in points and all that, so there's a championship needs to be settled. And, uh, and if we're up front, then, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do the best we can to win today's race. But we won't, we won't do anything to mess up that championship. So. And yet one of the people that's in the hunt for the championship is the guy he spun out with. And they talked just before the start of the race. And the one thing Al Unser Jr. told Dale Earnhardt is, all you're going to see of me today is the rear of my green bumper. All right, let's take a final look at how they will line up. On the pole will be Al Unser Jr., a two-time IROC champion, but his second start of this series. Hurley Haywood will be alongside the road racer. His best finish was a sixth at Darlington. In row two, Rusty Wallace, the IROC champion in 91. And Ricky Rudd, who won the IROC championship in his first attempt in 92. Row three, Tom Kendall, the road racer, making his third IROC appearance. And Steve Kinzer, who finished second to Earnhardt at Talladega. Row four, Jeff Gordon. His first season in IROC has produced a second back at Darlington. And Ken Schrader, the versatile driver, is competing in his first season in the IROC. In row five, Scott Pruitt. A second at Daytona is his best finish in IROC 19. And Mark Martin, he won at Darlington. Row six, Dale Earnhardt, the winner at Daytona and Talladega, goes for his second IROC title. So this is it, 11 Dodge Avengers. Dale Earnhardt, Mark Martin will start all the way in the back and have to climb their way through this field. Five different drivers with a chance to take home the IROC championship. The pace car pulls off the field, tightens up nice and tight. Very neat. Al Unser Jr. on the pole in that bright green car. The pace picks up. And here we go. The final round of the IROC is underway. Oh, you can barely tell it. Everybody stays in formation as they go through one. The speed comes up to top speed now. Awesome contact, so the tires oh, really on. Mark Martin looks like he got in there. Earnhardt's not yet made his move. Looking back at Rusty Wallace from Al Unser Jr. Back to second place now. The Adam track Rusty begin to pull away. The track recently repaved, unbelievably smooth. Run. And then Kinzer with Haywood up high, that second group of three. And Tommy Kendall on the inside in the black car trying, but now three abreast as they come towards the start-finish line to complete that first lap. But the real surprise to me remains Earnhardt, who seems to seek a position as they come four wide at the back. Earnhardt, you might have expected, Benny mentioned that he would move up fast, but so far he has not moved up at all. Surprise, Benny? I am first. Oh! oh crash. Pruitt gets it loose. Earnhardt gets by. How Everybody did, else does. How did Earnhardt get between that car and the wall? Unbelievable. Well, maybe we want to take a look at he the right did. side. Earnhardt did get through. He has damage to the car. Heavy smoke Smoking. off Earnhardt's car. That's the championship. Keep an eye on Earnhardt now. As he brings her down, of course, the yellow is out. Laps under the yellow do not count in the International Race of Champions. Listen, you can hear yeah. the right rear tire is flat. Earnhardt trying to win his second IROC championship. Only two other men have done that. Al Unser Jr., A.J. Foyt. So Earnhardt with right side damage. And he heads for the pits. This may help him, though. So does Tommy Kendall. It's not going to hurt him in that the uh, laps under yellow don't count. Also, Pruitt comes into the pits. This is what happened, Benny. We can see the blue car. Pruitt just gets the car sideways, goes around. 
And Can Mark Martin turns immediately left, and Earnhardt goes up and gets between Pruitt and the wall, but does do some damage as he brushes that wall. Jack Aroot. We're with Dale Earnhardt, and Dale is trying to get a signal to the crew here to tell them exactly what's wrong with the car. The fuel line's knocked off of it. The fuel line's knocked off of it. Dale, it looked as if you almost escaped, and then it got into the wall. I didn't touch the wall. It, it, it must have cut the tire when he spun or something. Run over something, he cut the right front tire, and it jerked the gas line off and smelled gas real bad. You can smell the gas. We'll see if we can show you what the crew is going to work right now. They're going to check. They're going to check and see if they can isolate where the fuel line is off. The damage quite extensive on Dale Earnhardt's car. But remember, caution laps do not count. So the IROC mechanics can get to work here and see if they can get Earnhardt back into the race. And Earnhardt's right. There's no damage other than that caused by that right front tire when it went down. So they worked on Dale Earnhardt's car, trying to get him back into the fight. We'll be back. But set up this yellow. You're on top of Dale Earnhardt's car. He did get into the back of Martin as Scott Pruitt started to spin. Martin went down low and actually ran across the grass. Another look. We'll take a look at it. Now, this is from the outside. Scott shooting this one. <laughs> Scott Ducks. Prudence is the better part of valor. Yes, it is. So Scott Pruitt drives away, and at the same time, that's when Earnhardt realized the right front was shredded. And let's go down to check. Well, we checked with Scott Pruitt when he came in for repairs and asked him exactly his recollections of what happened. He said, a little bit loose. He got up in the high stuff. The car started to spin around. Next thing you know, he was getting bumped and banged. And you could see it on that replay, guys. Things happen quick here at Michigan. All right, so we are set and ready to go. Earnhardt, the only car that remains in the pits. Scott Pruitt got it back out. And we are ready to go green once again. And Earnhardt, the championship is going away as Onser's telling Rusty Wallace, let's go, partner. Green flag, and we are off and racing. Major implications as to the championship because now Mark Martin must try to hold off Ken Schrader, who's just six points behind him. So it's really a Martin-Schrader battle now with Earnhardt in the pits. The crew continues to work on Earnhardt's car in the pits. It may very quickly become academic. Now we are riding with Mark Martin, who is, in effect, leading the championship. Looking back from Little Al to Rusty Wallace's car as Wallace comes up to give him some help. That's Rudd right just behind. And Kinzer on the close from fourth. Kinzer moving fast in that cream-colored car on the right. Jeff Gordon now making a move back with that second group. And here comes Mark Martin down on the inside. Already in front of the past three or four cars, including Earnhardt, who sits in the pits, is now one lap down. Tommy Kendall comes to the inside behind Mark Martin, trying to give him an advantage of the draft on the low line. Doesn't seem to help him all that much. And Pruitt extremely high, trying to make it three abreast. Imagine gathering your nerves back together as Pruitt has after that violent spin and be racing again moments later. Front of the field, it remains Al Lenzer Jr. Let's go down to Jack. Well, very quickly, an expensive stop, a tough accident for Dale Earnhardt. Major problem, broken tie rod. But more importantly, you heard him talk about it. This is the fuel line. It was severed in the accident. He's going two laps down now. The hope for the championship have gone out the window. Earnhardt continues to sit in the car. It's in the pits as he goes two laps down. On the track, it's still Al Unser Jr. that leads the battle. And Mark Martin is the guy to keep an eye on now as we come back up to the front. There's Junior, Wallace, Rudd, Kinzer, and Jeff Gordon. Al Unser Jr. leading the race now. Won his first major. There goes Kinzer down on the inside. On the inside, he was kicking up dust as he went on the inside. Whoa. And here comes Gordon trying to get by Rudd. Remember that Gordon is one of those five who could walk away with a championship at the end of the day. His possibilities increased greatly when Dale Earnhardt had his problems and continues to sit in the pits. Once again, Rusty Wallace taking a look at the leader, Al Unser Jr. This is from the rear bumper of Al Unser Jr.'s car. 
Rusty Wallace, who earlier in the year won at Martinsville, but has gone winless since then. Here comes Kinzer to the outside of Rusty Wallace, battling for second place. Again, comes so low, he picks up some dust. Shades of Talladega a year ago. And Steve Gordon, Kinzer. Gordon closes on Kinzer, moves to the inside. Has a great run as he comes down on the inside of Kinzer. Meanwhile, we see Mark Martin on the inside along with Tommy Kendall in the black car. That's Martin in the lime green. And look for Mark Martin's car as he closes up and is almost forced to help Gordon. But now moves in behind Rudd. Tom, right of your screen in the black car, he's the Trans Am ace leading the Trans Am points. He's obviously decided to try to follow Mark Martin in the green car. He's, he's really aped every move he's made so far. Dale Earnhardt still sits in the cockpit, waiting and waiting and waiting, but it's all but gone away now, unless something would happen. That, and I can't imagine what it would be that would get Dale back in this fight. What, what an unfortunate reward, so to speak, for a great piece of driving by Dale Earnhardt to keep his car out of bigger trouble. So it's Unser Jr., then Rusty Wallace, Steve Kinzer, Jeff Gordon, Ricky Rudd, Scott Pruitt, Mark Martin. As they came across the line last time around, six laps are complete, the 50-lap run. Al Hunter Jr. from the pole still has led every lap. I was going to say, this is where he won his first big oval race back in 1987 here in Iraq. So he has that sense of history here, that confidence. There we see Pruitt down on the inside, taking a run at Rudd. Can't make it. Down there all alone. But Rudd backs off, lets him go as he oh, backs off. Oh, now Martin come through, and Kendall still continues on the back of Martin. All right, here we go up past for the lead as Rusty Wallace is trying. He's alongside Unser. Kinzer helping Rusty Wallace. You look over from Al Unser Jr.'s car. Wallace has a nose ahead. Gordon helping Al Unser Jr. <laughs> That looked almost like a slide job. Kinzer's used to those things in the sprint cars. Kinzer muscling his way to the right to try to pick up a little draft from Rusty. Couldn't quite do it. Oh, Kinzer's in trouble now. The whole line is going by on the outside. So as Kinzer gets caught out, Rusty Wallace comes to the lead, taking it away from Al Unser Jr. They're running laps at 164.8 miles an hour. Yeah. Speed after that lengthy stop, Dale Earnhardt joins the fight and I, I guess you could say there is still a chance it may not even be a remote chance if he can hold on depending on attrition depending on placement he can actually end up still with the championship he can still win, the, win this thing he's only 11 laps 10 11 laps down right now Nine some, laps of these down. Other, some of these other fellows might have trouble and earn our pick up two or three spots could still easily be the champion back at the front of the field is still Rusty Wallace and Alan Jr. But his fate, to a certain extent, is in other people's hands. If Mark Martin can manage to win or pick up some of the bonus points for leading laps, then he will probably beat Earnhardt. Probably. So interesting scenarios. And, of course, not only the championship, but the race itself. And look, look at Gordon. Look at Jeff Gordon move up to second place between Rusty and Unser. Now, you see, if we're having trouble working out these scenarios, the scoring scenarios, with our scorers here in the booth, you can imagine how tough it is for the drivers who've got to figure out what's going on with the other guys, add up the points in their head, and then make their moves accordingly on those last lap maneuvers. Yeah, the interesting point has been made several times, and that is no communication, not even a pit board with these guys. I wonder, though, if you get a friend to stand down there in two and kind of stick a hand out and tell him where he is. Well, you wouldn't do a thing like that. No, no you? racer, no you racer would ever violate the consider spirit. that oh. sporting, would you call? So Rusty Wallace still in front. Jeff Gordon chases in second, then Al Unser Jr. Scott Pruitt sits back and forth. And Kinzer, then Mark Martin, and Tommy Kendall, all right there on your screen. Kendall on the right of your screen in the black car still shadowing Mark Martin. He's going to try to stay with him. That is an obvious tactic we're looking at right now. On board Alan Jr. 
Jr. Jeff Gordon just ahead as he moves to the inside. And takes the lead with ease from wow. Rusty Wallace. No problem at all with that pass and no help to get there. Came up, pulled a little draft off of Rusty, and then on his way past. So Gordon now has the lead, and this is important to Gordon because he's in that points fight. He needs to lead laps. Now we see Martin Martin making, making a run at Kinzer. He is by, but Kinzer up in the dark stuff trying to fight back, but Martin takes the spot. Kinzer's been all over the road, hasn't he, uh, Benny? He's tried high, he's tried low, he's made every move in the book. That's Tommy Kendall in the black car. Gets caught out of the draft. And will probably now be forced to slide in behind Steve Kinzer. Hey, he's still holding on pretty good, though. Back at the front once again, Jeff Gordon and Wallace. The green car is Al Inter Jr. Neither Wallace nor Jr. have a chance in the points fight for the championship. Gordon very definitely does. We'll be back the track and into the garage area the championship may finally be over but maybe not so quick because as we watch the battle for the lead continue and Jeff Gordon is now overhauled by Rusty Wallace and Al Enser Jr. Even at this moment Earnhardt is still the points leader by a single point over that man Jeff Gordon. So depending on attrition depending on the rest of the run even though he sits in the garage Earnhardt still can win. It is up to Jeff Gordon now to try to roll up the laps just as fast as he can and pick up points for that. It's incredible. Gordon started the day fifth in the championship and yet has emerged as Earnhardt's biggest pursuer, the way things are shaking out. Let's go to Jack Aruth. Well, the frustration on Dale Earnhardt is apparent, but right now, Dale, the way the cars are running, you still would be the IROC champion. Well, it's all in well, but... Uh... When we matched the front end, a tie rod broke when the tire blew it, wrapped up all the rubber in there and tore everything, which you guys seen. But it's got a bad, bad vibration now coming off the corner with the right front. And I'm, you know, the alignments must not be right or something. And I'm just worried about busting another tire. And I don't need to get the wall and break my neck again like I did back in the Winston Cup car here. That just about says it all, guys. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I'd take that chance either. <laughs> okay, Dale. One broken neck. It's okay with us. <laughs> I broke it once here. That's plenty. <laughs> so Rusty Wallace up front. Then Alan Sir Jr. and then Jeff Gordon sitting back and forth. That's Scott Pruitt. And then Tommy Kendall's working his way back up again and is in front of Mark Martin. Martin in that lime green car. Another key factor in this championship. Some things are going to happen very quickly toward the end of this race vis a vis the championship. Particularly if Martin, who appears to be trying to save his tires by running in the mid pack there, suddenly has something left for the end. He may become Earnhardt's closest pursuer. I, I guess that's a point, Benny, is we got a hot day here, very, very hot. And Mark Martin's job really is to try and save it for the end, isn't he? A brand new pavement is very abrasive. Hard on tires. There were some concern these tires might, be, might not be able to run 50 laps without wearing out. Mark Martin might be back there saving those to be sure, just like Sam said, at the last five, six laps, has a car that he can race with. Kendall drops low. Mark Martin comes out and helps him a little bit. Then Kendall comes back high, and Martin is left out. Surprised he doesn't tuck in there behind. Oh, no, he hits Pruitt. Some contact between Martin and Pruitt. And he does it again. He's leaning on him. Well, Pruitt can take that kind of thing. Pruitt's a pretty aggressive driver based on his Trans Am performances of last year and his IndyCar driving performances of this year. Yeah, but why is Martin doing it? I don't know. Uh, he must be really think he needs to get... Maybe he thinks he needs to get to the front right now. He might not, might not be able to pass these guys later. Maybe he doesn't realize that the tires are wearing as bad as they are. Could he just have gotten a little push, Benny, and just not have been able to keep it tucked down? I think coming off the corner, that's exactly right. He did get a little bit of a push and got up into Pruitt. See, here it's happening again. It seems like Mark Martin's having a tough time pinching that car down. So Mark Martin may be battling a problem as he continues his chase of Scott Pruitt. Rusty Wallace is still the leader. In second place is Alan Jr., followed by Jeff Gordon, who is very much in the fight here. Remember that Rusty last won an IROC race here in 1991. To round four of the International Race of Champions, let's go to our mechanics of racing. Here's Jack Aroot. 
Two basic premises of IROC competition have and continue to be parity and reliability. This year, the IROC mechanics replaced their old cast iron cylinder heads with a brand new aluminum cylinder head configuration. Now, why did they do this? Well, cast iron required a lot of labor intensive polishing and porting before they would be ready for use on the IROC cars. The aluminum cylinder head, on the other hand, was designed specifically for the racing environment, and any minor fashioning that was needed to get them ready was done with computer assistance. Now, the reliability factor is far greater with the aluminum as well. The old cast iron under real hot conditions tended to warp and, and actually crack, and you couldn't repair them, so you threw them in the trash. With aluminum, far better heat resistance, and if a minor crack does occur, you simply heli-arc weld it, grind it down, polish it back up, and you can work the cylinder head back into your workforce. Now, this may seem like a minor modification to you and I, but when you take the cumulative effect of every minor modification that's made in these IROC cars, you are getting closer and closer to having identically prepared vehicles for the race drivers. Tommy Kendall makes his move, comes out in front, gets around Rusty Wallace. Alan Sir Jr. sits third, then Jeff Gordon. Now, the tactics of this race are incredible. Earnhardt still, even though he's on foot in the garage area, is in the points position to take the championship. Alan Sir Jr. moving a little bit on Rusty Wallace. But for Mark Martin, he needs to get up to second place in order to win this thing. And Jeff Gordon needs to win it. And we see Mark Martin right now is the sixth place car. The lime green is Mark Martin. He's got to pass four cars to get up there. Jeff Gordon is in the dark blue car in fourth place. He's got to pass those three cars in front of them. But as Sam said at the beginning, there's no one to tell them that. And what Mark Martin is obviously, he's down to one gamble. He's not going to be able to pick up enough points, bonus points for leading to, to close on Earnhardt that way. He's got to make his points right at the end of the race. And if he is cooling his tires, oh, here goes Rusty. Rusty Wallace makes a move inside of Kendall. Little Al hasn't yet decided who he's going to help here. If he is cooling his tires, Mark Martin, then we're going to see something big right at the end. He just may not have the speed today, though. That's another possibility. He may not have the car capable of doing it. Right, Sam. Al Luncher Jr. right on the back bumper of Rusty Wallace. And if we could see in front of Rusty Wallace, we, there he is. Rusty right on the back bumper of Kendall. The incredible irony would be if the championship went to Earnhardt after all this tactical discussion, a man who was standing in the garage area with no tactics at all up his sleeve would win the championship. That would be truly bizarre. Oh, a little help there from Al Unser Jr. Come on, Rusty, let's get moving. A bump draft. Kendall, Wallace, Unser Jr., Gordon, Scott Pruitt, Mark Martin, Steve Kinzer. Don't rule Kinzer out. Oh, don't forget that finish at Talladega. Absolutely don't rule Kinzer out of this. You see Al Jr. trying to get by Rusty Wallace down on the inside. Has a run going in one. Remember, Al Jr. just about had Daytona one at the beginning of this year before he tangled with Dale Earnhardt. He's the most experienced of all these drivers in terms of IROC competition. He's been in nine IROC. Suggested it's starting that he could be a spoiler in the fight. He currently occupies a position that Mark Martin would just love to have. The tires are going to be critical, the heat's critical, and maybe take it down to a single crew. Now we've got four cars lined up trying to draft by Kendall, but they evidently could not make it. They've all fallen behind Kendall. Tommy Kendall right now running extremely high in the corner. That racetrack is more abrasive than it is below, so he is wearing his tires more than the guys running lower. You know, you really can't say enough for Kendall of course has a tremendous Trans Am success. But here he is, a road racer on this high bank super speedway doing very well. He did very well in Darlington, had a very good run there. I think Tommy Kendall is getting more and more accustomed to the stock cars and doing a much better job than a couple of years ago. Another road racer was that way was Jack Baldwin. Very much the same. Once he got it adjusted to him, he really adapted well. So Tommy Kendall is the leader over Al Unser Jr., Rusty Wallace, Jeff Gordon, and Mark Martin. Both need to move up. We'll be back. Back at Michigan Inter
International Speedway where the clouds begin to move over and Tommy Kendall still leads it and everybody is just going to line up behind Tommy no matter where he goes. That's Al Unser Jr. in the green car just behind him. The pink car is Rusty Wallace, then Jeff Gordon, Scott Pruitt, and Mark Martin. And all of the contenders, therefore, Gordon, Pruitt, and Martin, the contenders in the points fight are all right there, all mixed together. Al Unser Jr. tries it. He's trying to get by, and it looks like he might have a run on Kendall this time, but Kendall comes back. Three road racers in the top five, and two of them leading this race right now. Kendall's been running way up there, Benny. He has been running up there. The car gets an awfully good grip, but as I said a moment ago, it wears the tire faster than more on the racetrack. Well, he's made a good showing, Kendall has, up at the front. Do you think he might try to cool him down right now in time for the dash at the end? Well, that one thing that he's doing when he runs the top is he is cooling the tires. They aren't slipping as much up there, so it's only wearing. They're not getting hot up there. As we see now, Kendall is back in third spot as here comes Jeff Gordon trying to take that spot away. All right, let's take a review of the championship. Earnhardt. If, if right now this thing was over, would still be the winner of the IROC Championship. Mark Martin in second. But and Mark Martin, who you see on the right side of the screen there, Paul, he has got to make a move. He still has this championship within his reach. Well, he has to get second place, and Jeff Gordon has to win it. There's, there is, there is Earnhardt as he watches the race, Jack. Jack Aroot. Paul Dale Earnhardt has found a place to watch the race. He's listened to your commentary. He doesn't want to have to win a championship this way, but he said he'll take it any way he can get it. He is recognition as well of the fact that they don't have radios. And he said, boy, this is a time that Martin could use a spotter, isn't it? Well, I'll tell you what, Dale, we'll make a deal right now. If you don't want to win it this way and you do, I'll take the Dodge Avenger. Oh, no, see, kids are trying to get by. Mark Martin almost made it. And Jeff Gordon is all the way back in, what is that, seventh spot now? Yeah. Boy, Mark Martin is acting like a man who may just not have the speed under his right foot. I don't know. Wouldn't you think, Benny, if he did, he'd just be playing up further up? He obviously needs to get much closer, and there's only just a handful of laps to go. So, Mark, you got to go up. If you're going to win the money, now is the time. I would think the fact that he is not is telling us that he can't. Yeah, I, I think you're exactly right, Paul. Jeff Gordon still stuck way back there. Behind Kinzer. Got to keep an eye on, too, is Pruitt. Remember, he can still be part of this fight. Martin riding right behind Pruitt. Pruitt, of course, surviving that big spin early in the race, which involved Earnhardt. Makes his move to the inside of Kinzer. Comes up behind Martin. Maybe they can get together and work and bring him forward. And whoa, look at Kinzer as he gets way high and throws some dust up against the wall. So at the front, it's still Al Unser Jr., who has won three high rock races here at Michigan International Speedway. It ties him for the most with Neil Bonnet. The final round of the International Race of Champions moving to the closing laps now. We're going to carry all the way to the checkered flag. This is the current race standings. But, of course, the real key is the battle for the championship as Mark Martin just slid one position back. That's going to be costly. Dale Earnhardt, while well, he's still sitting back in the garage area, and Jeff Gordon forges to the outside and passed two cars on the outside down the front straightaway. And Mark Martin is desperate. This is... We're riding with Mark Martin, this line green car. He's trying his best to get to the front, but is Rusty going to let him go? Looks like he is. So in the championship, it's still Earnhardt that can take the win despite the fact he's sitting in the garage area. Mark Martin needs a second place if he is going to win it. And Scott Pruitt and Jeff Gordon, of course, need to finish up at the front. And while Kendall was leading for seven laps, he took bonus points away from Gordon, who led five. The smallest miscalculations can take the championship away from you. Remember back in 1984 when Waltrip, when he finished fourth in the last race, thought he had it won. He moved into a tie. <coughs> and uh, 
but later a tie with Gant. But then because Gant had won the race that day, Gant became the overall winner. So things can get very close, and it may happen here. Benny, you sat once in a situation like this, thought you saw a championship getting away from you. At Rockingham in 1973, I crashed on the 13th lap, and I thought the championship was over. But I, they fixed the car, got back on the racetrack, just like Earnhardt did, ran enough laps to go ahead and win the Winston Cup championship. Battle for the championship sits back here. Gordon, Pruitt, and Mark Martin. Boy, this is where Mark Martin needs someone to tell him, here's what you got to do. But as the field is spreading out, I think the chances for a last-minute leapfrog by Martin are being reduced with each lap, don't you, Paul? Well, you know what I'm really wondering when I, as we watch Kendall come up to challenge Little Al again and again use that high side. What, what I'm really wondering about with Mark Martin is, with Earnhardt out, does he possibly think that he doesn't have to get up further? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah. That's exactly what I'm thinking. It's but Mark's I a heads-up race driver. I mean, oh yeah. He surely knows the numbers. It's ironic though that Al Unser Jr., who had that uh, coming together with Earnhardt at Daytona, is acting as a spoiler at this point for the hopes of the other championship uh, contenders, men like Martin. Uh, he is now actually helping to hand the championship to Earnhardt by forcing all the other cars back a spot. And here, Kendall takes the lead from Al Jr. Tommy Kendall in the black car, passes Al Unser Jr., the green car, for the lead with just two and a half laps to go. And, uh, and we really can't, while we focus on the championship, take anything away from Tommy Kendall, who is driving a superlative race here. Look how high he is now. But he missed the corner that time. Woohoo! almost hits the wall as he comes off the corner, and Al Jr. has a run. We well, saw Al go down low there to be sure he gave him plenty of room if he needed it. Al two, Hunter Jr. back in front. Two road racers. You would have thought this was Winston Cup territory, but two road racers look to have this thing running between them. Mark Martin and Pruitt continue to try and battle it out. Kinzer once again comes off the corner high. Moving to the final lap. Just two to go, actually a lap and a half as they turn into turn three. And, and as Earnhardt still has the championship. It is now going to take a miracle by Mark Martin to wrest this championship from Dale. You see sitting there, obviously nursing a hope now that he might win it. A very real hope. Final lap. Final lap is Al Lesser Jr. Dale Earnhardt could become one of three men to be two-time IROC championships in a year that he might very well break Richard Petty's seven championship string in Winston Cup. Little contact between those two cars and Earnhardt. The best news is you don't have to split this money with children. You know that. This is all your money. <laughs> <laughs> Here they come, Al Lesser Jr. and Tommy Kendall down to the line. Checkered flags in the air. Hunter Jr. comes for the win. The question is Mark Martin, of course. Where can he come? And Hunter Jr. takes the win. Mark Martin is not in position to do it. There's your new champion. I won. 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 I <laughs> well, Dale Earnhardt, congratulations. You did win the championship in the luxury of air conditioning and a prime seat with everything that was happening. Well, it's a shame we, our car started having a vibration and a fuel problem, but it was a great race. I was pulling for little Al, and, you know, we had a problem at, down at uh, uh, Daytona, and uh, he wrecked. Uh, so it's fitting. He won the race, and we ended up winning the championship because of Mark and the guys couldn't ever get up there. But... Little Al and Tommy Kendall, and those guys look strong, so I was pulling for them all the way. Well, besides a quarter of a million dollars, there's a special presentation as well. You know the drill. A Dodge Avenger, a street version, goes to the winner of the IROC, and making the presentation is Ron Smith, the marketing manager for Dodge Division. Dale, on behalf of Dodge, we want to congratulate you on the fine series, and I hope you enjoy the new black Dodge Avenger, which is appropriate. Good luck. Yeah, we're Thank going you. to. We really appreciate it. Dodge has been a super uh, sponsor in the series, and I'm on. This is going to be something I have a pride. I've got a, a museum of a lot of cars. This is going to go right in there beside my Monte Carlo uh, pace car from Indy. So she's going to look good in my in my museum. So we appreciate it. Thank you a lot. Hey guys, kind of appropriate. It's black.
And here are the final results of the run here at Michigan International Speedway. Al Unser Jr., his ninth race win in the International Race of Champions. And Tommy Kendall, you can't say enough for this young road racer. What a terrific day. His best ever finish in an IROC race. As we look at the bottom half of the group, of course, Steve Millen did not start, and we wish him well and speedy recovery. Let's go to Jack. Well, Mark, you saw Dale Earnhardt go out, and you thought you'd won the championship? Well, I don't know. I had a, the worst car I've ever drawn in IROC. I couldn't do anything with it. Uh, nothing on the straightaway. It was missing, and I couldn't do anything with it in the corners either. So uh, that's all I had. And uh, I was more worried about the guys on the track than I was Earnhardt. Uh, he just had a big old lead. We messed up and got caught in a wreck on the last lap of Daytona, and that was, what our, that was our downfall. So Mark Martin just didn't have the car to overhaul Dale Earnhardt, who takes the win while watching it on television. Third in the points, Scott Pruitt, Jeff Gordon, Tommy Kendall, and Ken Schrader. Those are the top six. Al Unser Jr. was tied with Steve Kenzer, and then Rusty Wallace, Ricky Rudd, Hurley Haywood, and Steve Millen. So that's the way the points come out. Now, what that translates to in terms of payout, well, here's the way they paid out for the International Race of Champions. And don't forget, you add in that Dodge Avenger for Dale Earnhardt. So it was a good day and a comfortable one as he was able to watch all of it in the comfort of air conditioning and on television. He had that much of a points lead in the IROC series. So IROC 19 has now come to an end and another great series it was as well. So already now, Jay Signori and the IROC crew begin to plan on next year. And there's a surprise in store as the mark changes over to Pontiac's for the run in IROC 20. And already they'll begin to think of picking the drivers for the next run. I'm Paul Page for Benny Parsons, Sam Posey, and Jack Aruth. So long from Michigan.